Ciao everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to properly set it up a recording project. Let's assume you're here, first day on the job, or on the assignment, and an artist is waiting for you in the other side of the room. Let's assume that if you're already done all the prep, choosing the microphone, choosing the placement, tuning the instrument, so on and so forth. Right now, our job is to how do we bring something that is in our live room into our control room into Pro Tools. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the exact lining command of things to do in order to obtain a great sounding recording. So first and foremost, right now here I have opened a different project. So I got here and the person before me didn't reset the project. So here's what you want to do. You want to go back into where it says template, click on template, and then from the template you can choose what type of project you're dealing with, whether it is a mixing project or a recording project. In this case we want to record. So what you want to do is move to where it says tracking mode template, click on the encoder to select that, then move to where it says TR, which stands for total recall, and from Total Recall, you're going to see a second screen of commands right underneath. Now, the default state is channel. You don't want that first. You want to go first on where it says SEL, select. Click on select. Make sure the tracking default is selected. Then you move to channel. And right all over to the right side of the TFT screen, there is an all which correspond to the second row of buttons over here. Now double click on all and your board has normal. And what you're going to see is that every single track has been now flipped from monitoring to recording as the LED next to each single um, microphone input turned red and as well as the monitoring path down here. Now the last thing you want to do, just to make sure that you're not going to run into any problem throughout the recording, is press the button called Scan once. And the scanning is going to run a very quick scan of the entire board and tell you in which part of the analog path your board has not been normaled, which you have to do it manually, of course. So over here I'm seeing channel 11 not being matched. So what I'm going to do is go on channel 11 take a look at my TFT screen and I can already tell that is my auxes. So I'm going to go on my auxes and follow the white line over there until it becomes green. Channel 15 is not matched so we're going to go on channel 15. What is it? This is the high filters. Done. Everything else has been matched. So now the console has been defaulted to record. Now you're halfway through your recording or an attempt to record. So if you move within the monitoring section, there are a few things that you want to make sure. First of all, remove the cut out of your monitors and make sure you are at a comfortable level. Now generally, generally 6.0, it's a good monitor level to start with. Again, make sure to select the proper monitor. In this case, we're going to select Mini A. And within the monitoring path, you want to click on REC, record, because we are in the record path. Now, as soon as you do this, you want to as well check what is called the main stereo buses. And you want to make sure to select the master fader that will bring to the monitors is set into record mode. So I'm going to hold down the button fader and click on record. Lastly, what I want to do is to go into my main monitor control and set all my tracks to TRK so that all my tracks are just ready to be recorded. And this is as far as it goes with the SSL. Now let's go ahead and see what happens into our digital domain. So what I'm going to do here is to open up a Pro Tools session, launch the program, and you want to create a brand new session. So right now we want to call this Rec RPT, Recording and Production Techniques, and you generally would choose the right sample rate, 
and bit depth for the project. Now the IO settings is generally left for last use and that's because we have a, a precise IO settings in our computer here in Studio A which you want to make sure to understand. So right now I'm just going to leave 44.1 24-bit has this recording doesn't require any higher sample rate and then you can choose where you want to locate your session. So generally we want to save our things into our save here. We're going to call it project recording. All right. And I'm going to store this into my external drive, save here B. Okay. So now we have a blank session. Nothing is in here. It's about time to create a track. Before we do this, I'm going to go into the setup menu and open up the I.O. menu because I want to show you something. Now the I.O. input and output is where we generally select the inputs that feed our converters in our machine room and the converters that will talk to our board. So it's really important that the two of them are synced together. As you can see here we have three different tabs. I mean we have more than three but the main important one are the input tab, output tab and buses. You want to make sure that these tabs are exactly as they you see over here. So we have our input tabs, which go from A12 to A4748. The output tab actually has stereo 1 to stereo 24, which is the exact number of our tracks here. And stereo, because as I told you before, the console has the capability of transforming a mono analog signal into a stereo return. So for the time being, bear with me. Just bear with the stereo 1 and 2, and the buses are an exact replica. If you work with a session that was created elsewhere, at home, in another studio, or perhaps you come here and you see any of the stab that doesn't match with this corresponding nomenclature, here's what you have to do first, even before starting a project. You hold down Option or Alt, go where it says Import Settings, and you select Studio A IO dot PIO. Delete and use buses, yes. And now we know that everything that belongs to the IO session, input output session of our Pro Tools, is the correct one. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So now we can finally create our first track. Shift Command N to bring up the new track dialog. We're going to rename this because we don't want to again have all our tracks over session renamed at audio 1, audio 2, audio 3, audio 4. We have to assign proper and meaningful name. So we're going to call this guitar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And as you can see here, my guitar track, which is the instrument I'm going to track today, has been properly created. Now, if you click on this little tab, I like to color code my instruments as well. My guitars are always green, always. So I can always recognize them along a session. Now, there are a few things that I want you to see. And they belong to the I.O. again. I'm going to move to my mix window, command equal. As you can see over here, under I.O., we have uh, A1, which corresponds to our hardware input right, the input that comes from the console into Pro Tools. So right now I have input 1. The output goes to a hardware output, stereo 1. As you can see here again, there is stereo 1, left, right, stereo 2, left, right. Always make sure that the output of each single track, even though it's mono, feeds a stereo track. And that's because how we configured the console in the studio, all right? So, if I want my track to be on an other track over here, we could do it. So let's say we want our track to an, an analog um, path, which is our track number nine. So what I'm going to do is click on my output where it says output and go and look for stereo nine. So as you can see right now, my track is feeding stereo nine. So right now we have our track that has been properly routed to channel 9. 
Now, the board and Pro Tools do talk simultaneously. But before you actually hear sounds, or you will hear sounds inside your monitors, you want to make sure you are getting signal from the other room. Because again, you don't want to run into a problem that you accidentally crank the volume and you find out, oh, my cut monitor was engaged. You unmute it and the overall um, monitor system blows and jokes aside, it could truly hurt your ears. So you want to make sure first and foremost to start receiving any signal from the outer room. In the live room of Studio A, we face a completely different challenge. What I mean is that right now we have to really analyze what is the path of our source. In other words, every time we're trying to record something, we always want to keep in mind two things, something called source to destination. Now our source, it's our microphone or our instrument, if you may. Our destination, well, is certainly Studio A or the control room. Now, it's very important for us to understand how we can take a signal from any of our live room and bring it into the control room, and at the same time, how to send a signal from the control room into the live room. To do so, let's start tackling first one problem at a time. Now, the first thing we have to do is to, of course, choose what instrument we need to mic, what type of treatment we want to utilize with that instrument, what type of microphone, and how to connect it. So right now I've already placed my microphone. I've chosen a U87 and I'm trying to capture the sound of this guitar amplifier. Now the first thing you want to do is to grab an XLR cable from our machine room and connect one end to our microphone and the other end to one of our tie line. Now we're going to be choosing one of the mic inputs. We selected mic input nine. And as we're going to see on our board, and inside Pro Tools and from the patch bay, that's the source that we need to keep in mind and try to patch this source to our destination, which is our recorder. This is, as far as concerns, sending a signal from the live room into the control room. Now we need to send a signal from the control room to the live room. In other words, I want the musician to be able to listen to his or her instrument. And as well, we need to be able to communicate. So whereas sometimes we have some talkback microphone from the live room to the control room, from the board, from our SSL, we generally set a talkback through our patch bay. Now to do so, we need something called Avium system. Now the Avium, in this case, is a system that works via Ethernet and allow us to send discrete monitoring to our musicians, which through the different channels that the Avium gives them, they can create their own custom mix. Now, one thing you need in order to complete a normalization of the queue for the musician. Well, first and foremost, you need to connect the Avium to our tie line. Now, Avium use Ethernet connection. So what you're going to be connecting is one Ethernet port to our Avium. and then the other extremity of the Ethernet cable to our tie line. The second thing you will need is, of course, a pair of headphones. Now, in the back of the Avium, you can always connect the headphones. And right now, you can be sure that the artist is going to hear you. Now, the Avium over here features a few sets of command. It has a master volume that controls all 16 incoming signal, and as well, a big knob that controls the level that feeds each single of these 16 input channels. So again, when it comes to talkback, we could take the talkback of our console, SSL, and plug it in into any of the 16 input of the Avium. Bear in mind that the way we have it set it up is that input one and two and three and four received a cue, which is a stereo. So in case you want to send a group of instruments, let's say a drum kit that has things panned left and right, you might want to use one and two and three and four. Five, six, seven, eight, until 16, by default, they're mono. So we can send something like the click on 14, talk back on six, 
bass guitar and seven. And through the big knob over here, the musicians can create their own customizable mix without even having you to adjust level per each musician. It is a very interesting way of doing things and allow extremely freedom and expressiveness to the musicians that at that point, they only have to really recreate the balance that they are more comfortable with during their recording. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to go on track nine and bring my fader at unity, which is generally the zero indicated on my fader. And right now, what I'm going to do is to create a talkback system to being able to talk with my artist. So the talkback system can be found here on the patch bay. What I'll do is go on where it says talkback, indicate it with the letter TB, and send it to any of the eight Avium inputs. So I'm going to go with Avium number six. So right now, if I press XTB, I should be able to talk with my artist. Hey artist, can you hear me right? Cool, so he does hear us. The second thing you want to do is to activate his monitor. Because again, he wants to be able to, as we explained before, tweak and adjust volumes through his Avium system. So here on the console, we actually have a row of QSense stereos, which is the first green row right underneath the headphones. So what you want to do is to click on it. So now all the headphones, since everything is selected, have lighted up in orange and just grab the potentiometer and bring the volume until he hears himself. So next in line, we want to control the level. So now that we are able to talk with our musician and we have set it up a proper level for his headphones, there are a couple more things that we need to do. Well, first and foremost, remember when I talked to you about tie lines? Well, this is the right moment for you to think, where did we plug our microphone? Microphone line, or microphone input number nine. The way it generally works is that patch bay are normaled output from the live room, input to the control room in a sequential way. Of course, here dealing with many different spaces and a live room that has such a big dimensions, we generally tend to find the tie line that works for us. In other words, the tie line that is closest to our instrument. So in this case, we plugged our microphone into tie line number nine. Therefore, I'm gonna go to the patch bay and I'm gonna do a couple things. First and foremost, I'm gonna search for where my live room output is. And right now I see my live output nine being on top of channel five. So this means that technically my guitar is actually being normaled with channel five. Top to bottom are normaled on a patch bay. Right now I wanna break this normalization because again, I wanna follow the same order or some sort of weird mental order I got. So tie line number nine, I want to find the same input on my track number nine. So I have to break the normalization. How do I do it? I do it with a patch cord. So in this case, I'm gonna be using a patch cord to break the normalization top to bottom and take the output of that instrument and send it wherever I want on the console. Bear in mind, if I don't have to break the normalization, whatever number is underneath the live room output one, two, three, four, will be automatically normal with the console input one, two, three, four sequentially. So it's completely up to you where you want to find your signal on the board. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and plug my patch cord number nine and I'm gonna bring it to SSL channel input, mic input nine. In Pro Tools, I'm gonna do the exact same thing because Pro Tools right now matches, or better, the converter in Pro Tools, my HD converter matches the same input I'm choosing 
on my console. So I'm going to go interface, choose number nine. So right now we're almost ready to go again. We have to think what type of microphone we use. We use a condenser microphone, a U87. So the first thing I'm going to do is to turn on my 48V into my mic pre section. And now I'm going to ask the player to perform so that we can find a good balance level to record our source. I'm going to go ahead and press my talkback to communicate with him. Hey there. Could you please play something for me so I can find a good levels? All right, so right now I'm going to go ahead and start bringing up a little bit of my level from my mic free. And as you can see right now, we have an LED, only the left one, showing us that we have some input incoming into the console. Now we still don't hear it because the right portion of my input level here is the return from Pro Tools. So now that I know that I have some good healthy level feeding my SSL, I want to send this to my converters to then take it back and send it to my monitors. To do so, I'm going to enable my input monitoring. And now we have it. Once we're happy with our level, we can arm the record, press three. And there we have it. We have completed our first recording. As you can see right now, the two levels, the left and right, are telling us that we have incoming signal from the live room, and as well that there is a signal feeding Pro Tools. So left and right right now don't have to be misunderstood as a stereo left and right, but rather two different types of source to destination path. So the left side focuses on the incoming signal from the live room to the console, whereas the right signal focuses on what comes inside Pro Tools. So as a general rule of thumb, you always want to make sure that whatever signal feeds Pro Tools is not going to clip. And this is about it on how to properly set up a recording session. We're going to talk about how to maximize and understand what is the correct level to record your source in our next video.